Yes, and then, following that, it was the theme of garden, the first garden, the Garden of Eden, where God created people who sadly chose to disobey their creator, God, after Satan, who was disguised as the evil snake, tripped them. And they sinned against God, but then we saw how in the Garden of Tears, the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus decided to pay the price for our sin, so that we could be forgiven by God and brought into his family forever when he chose to do the hard thing and die on the cross in our place. And of course we found out about the final garden too, uh, which will be created one day when Jesus comes back, when he comes back to the earth to make all things new. And it will be the most beautiful and the most amazing garden ever. Wow, that was a great theme. I really enjoyed the theme of garden. And then after the theme of garden, it was water rescue. First, we heard about Noah, who was rescued from the great flood through a big boat called an ark by God because he trusted God. And then we saw Moses and the Israelites who were rescued through the Red Sea from the nasty Egyptians and Pharaoh who were chasing them. But God rescued them because they trusted God too. And finally, Peter, who was rescued from drowning in Lake Galilee by Jesus himself because he trusted Jesus. Reminding us how we can also be rescued by Jesus through his death on the cross if we trust in him too. Great, yes, another great theme. Well, that's three themes. Theme number four was the theme of bread. Now first we looked at bread from heaven when God provided bread for his people in the wilderness showing us that he always gives us what we need. And then we thought about bread from nowhere when Jesus fed over 5,000 people with just two fish and five small loaves of bread showing us that he must be God and he is what we need most. And then finally, uh, we thought about bread to celebrate, which is called the Last Supper, when Jesus shared wine, representing his blood, and bread, which was a picture of his body that would be broken the very next day when he died on the cross to rescue us so that we could be welcomed into God's forever family, showing us that he is the bread from heaven and the bread of life, and he is the one who satisfies all of our needs so we should thank him for all that he has done for us exactly and then theme number five was sheep we saw how in the old testament david the shepherd boy became king he was chosen by god because god looked at his heart and god saw that david loved him he was a good king but he wasn't the perfect king but he pointed us forward to Jesus, who is the perfect shepherd king. We found out how Jesus is our good and faithful shepherd who gives us good things and protects us from the evil one, just like a good shepherd looks after his sheep and protects them from danger. And we saw how Jesus did the ultimate thing to keep us safe from evil, something that even a good shepherd wouldn't do because Jesus gave up his life for us when he chose to die on the cross in our place. Yes, indeed. What a kind 
and loving shepherd Jesus is. And of course, we all remember the last mini series that we've just done, uh, which was the uh, series about languages. And we looked at languages in the Bible. We started at, at the Tower of Babel, where languages were first created. And uh, we saw the, the confusion and the chaos when God confused people's languages because they had rebelled against him, wanting to take all the glory for themselves. But then we saw the gift of language at Pentecost, when the disciples were given the gift to speak in every language of the world and tell people from all over the world the good news about Jesus. And then last week we saw the wonderful picture of how one day when Jesus comes back to the earth to rule and to reign, people from every country who speak every language uh, will worship Jesus all around his throne as one big family praising our King Jesus at the greatest party and the greatest worship gathering that will ever be and that will last forever. Wow, six amazing themes of the Bible. But what's the seventh? Can you guess from the clue? Okay. Okay, clue number one, a CD of worship. Okay, here's clue number two, a microphone. And clue number three is a timber. Uh, here we have my, one of my guitars. And the last clue, it's a pineapple shaker. Interesting. Any ideas? Any ideas? What do you think the theme is? Well, well done if you said singing or music, because over the next three Families at Four, we are going to find out about three different things the Bible tells us about singing. First, how creation sings praises to God. Then, how God sings over us. And how one day everything will praise Jesus in song. Great, amazing. This has to be one of my favourite things. I love singing. Uh, we're definitely finishing with a great mini series. I look forward to hearing more about creation, praising God because he is good in John's Bible talk, which will be a little bit later on. Now, there'll also be a big question from me, a series of mini games, which we look forward to, a name that tune challenge, a musical craft also from me. That's going to be great and lots, lots more in today's singing celebration. Sounds great. Before we get into all that though, I think it's time for a song. In our Bible story today, we'll find out that all of creation sing God's praises because he is good and faithful. So let's do just that. Let's praise God together and sing the song that we learned last week Lift up your voices. See if you can spot the line which tells us to join in with creation, singing God's praises. Janine and Jessica are leading the actions for us, so do join in with them and the singing or just jump around the room and dance as we praise God in song together now. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
to hear the Lord speaking. Humble your hearts, tremble at His voice. Come in with joy for the future. He will renew heaven and earth. Jesus is Lord. He's the one who raise us. Lift up your voices. To heaven's King, bow down before His throne. Our perfect Savior died for our sin. Hallelujah, praise to Jesus Christ. Lift up your voices. Okay, well today we're starting, as uh, we've already told you, a mini-series about singing, singing in the Bible. And I have a big question for you, actually big questions, I've got a few of them. First, a little question for you to think about, and the question is this, what are your hobbies? What are your hobbies? When you're not at school, uh, when you're not doing homework, uh, when you're not helping with washing up or hoovering in the house, what are your hobbies? What do you like to do? What kind of things do you like to do? Well, one thing that I love to do is listen to music. I really, really like listening to music. And I don't just like listening to music. I like making music too. I like playing music on my guitar. I've got a bass guitar. Um, I like to play some drums. I haven't got any of them. They're a bit big and a bit loud. Um, so I haven't got any of them in the house. But I do like to make music on my guitar. Now music can be great, perhaps you really like music. I love all sorts of music, but I particularly like songs that are written to praise Jesus. Songs which tell us how great Jesus is and how great uh, God is. Songs can be a great way, can't they, of telling Jesus how much we love him and hearing all the great things that Jesus has done for us. Well, because we're going to be thinking about sinning for the next three weeks, here I've got today's big question written in this book here, because there's a couple of them. Uh, let me have a look. Where are we? Let's have a look. Today's big question is... Here we go. What is your favourite song and why? What is your favourite song and why? Perhaps you've got a favourite song. Or another question I've got that you could think about is what song do you like to sing? Perhaps there's a song that you really like to sing. Or an even greater, bigger question that you could think about now for the next 30 seconds is can you think of a song that we sing about Jesus? A, a song that tells us how great Jesus is. And can you think why you love it so much? Why is it such a great song? Now, why don't you have a chat with whoever you're with for 30 seconds. You can pause the video if you want to. And then afterwards, Laura's got a game for us. So for our game today, I have a variety of mini games for you to play. There'll be one round for each mini game, five points up for grabs in each round, and there are five rounds altogether. First, you'll need a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil, so 10 seconds to find those items, go and grab them now. Got them? 
make sure you keep a track of your score as we go. Okay, are you ready? Let's play. Round one is called Don't Mention It. Don't mention it, there it is. So what's going to happen in this round is I'm going to describe the items on the cards inside and you have to guess. I have three forbidden words I can't mention, so that's going to make it a little bit trickier. How many can you guess correctly? Write down your answers when you've worked them out and I'll reveal the answers at the end so you can see how many you got right. There are five to guess all together in this round. Okay, let's have a look. Let's find the first one. Okay, here's the first one. Okay, so this person wears blue and red, a cape. Uh, their arch enemy is the Joker. Um, and they save people. Do you know who it is? Write down the word. Okay, next one. Okay. Okay, this is something you might eat. Um, it's also a word to describe if you're really cold. And if you eat it, it might come from Mexico. Uh, popular dishes, this con carne. And it, it tastes perhaps like your mouth is on fire. Do you know what it is? Write it down. Okay, number three. Number three. Oh, okay. This is a word that we thought about last week in families at four. It comes from a different language from a country which is near China. And the first part means empty and the last part means orchestra of the word. So it means that there's music which is recorded and you might have this at a party. Do you know what it is? Write it down. Okay, number four, number four. Okay, this is an activity that you might like to do um, it, it, when you go in the pool and one type of this is front crawl and another is backstroke. Do you know what it is? Okay, last one. Last one. Okay, this is an animal who can reach up really high into the sky and eat leaves at the top of the trees. And this animal is yellow with a yellow and brown pattern. Do you know what it is? Well, hopefully you've got your five answers written down. Let's go through the answers. Okay, so the first one, let me see. I think the first one was, here we go, it was Superman. So give yourself a tip if you've got Superman. The next one, I think it was this one, wasn't it? It was number two, Chili. Give yourself a tip if you've got chili. And then we had from last week karaoke. A tick if you've got karaoke. And then we had sports swimming. And finally, it was a tall animal. I couldn't say long neck, it was a giraffe. So give yourself a tick if you've got that one. So, did you get all five? Count up how many you got right. And if you have black hair, you can have five extra points. Round two is called Spot the Difference. I'm going to show you a picture of this table behind me with a range of objects on, and then I'm going to show you the table again after I've changed some things around. And you have to see if you can spot the five differences. Make sure you're looking carefully and write down the five differences on your paper so you can keep score. Okay, here we go. has changed colour. The orange highlighter changed into a green highlighter. Difference number three, the tin of baked beans changed into a tin of chickpea. Difference number four, the onion and the pot of play-doh where well, they swapped around. And difference number five, this little green frog was added on the end. Well well done if you found all five. Give yourself a point for each difference you wrote down. But if you're under 18 years old though, 
you lose five points. You lose five points. Make sure you're keeping score. Okay, round three. We have a Pictionary round. I'm going to describe to you a mystery object and you have to try to draw it on your paper and work out what it is. Write down the answer on your paper when you think you know what you've drawn. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. The first thing you have to draw is a small circle at the top of your page. A small circle at the top of your page. Then draw two diagonal lines starting from either side of your circle and going down the page diagonally towards each other until they meet at a point in the middle. It should look a little bit like an upside down triangle underneath your circle. So your circle an upside down triangle. And then draw lots of diagonal lines across your circle and then more diagonal lines the other way to make a crisscross pattern in the circle. And that's it. So you can pause your video if you need more time. Once you've drawn it, write down what you think it is. Okay, well I wonder if you got it. It should have looked a little bit like this, and it was a microphone. Well done, if you got that right, you can award yourself five points. And if you're a girl, you can have 10 extra points. Okay, round four is catchphrase. Can you work out the catchphrase from the pictures? Look closely at the pictures I'm about to show you and see if you can work out the well-known phrase and write it down. born in the UK you lose 10 points from your score. Okay and our last round is a round of charades. Can you guess the charade that I act out correctly? Okay here we go. to guess it correctly. In fact, give yourself 20 extra points if you're wearing yellow, like me, but if you're wearing blue, lose 20 points from your overall score. So, add up your final score to see how many you got all together. And why don't you let us know what you got so that we can announce the winners next time. Well done everyone for taking part in those mini games. But was it fair that I gave you extra points if you were a girl, had black hair or were wearing yellow? But you had to lose points just because you were under 18 years old, born in the UK or were wearing blue. Was that fair? That wasn't fair at all, was it? In fact, it was probably very frustrating and unfair. Well, in today's Bible talk, we're going to find out that one day, Jesus will judge the earth and everything in it. But unlike the unfair scoring rules in my game, he will judge fairly and in truth. People won't lose out or get treated unfairly just because of how they look, where they're from, whether they're a boy or a girl, how old they are or what they're wearing, like they did in that game. The thing that will matter is if they have put their trust in Jesus, which is something that everyone is invited to do. Before we hear that Bible passage read to us, and then the Bible talk from John, Brenda is going to pray for us. Hello everybody, how nice to be with you again today. And as I'm recording this, the sun is just pouring down outside. And when I go in my garden, I can hear the birds singing. I see the butterflies around. 
all creation seems to want to be out in the sunshine and singing with joy to God. And that's what I want to do. So we're going to praise God now in prayer and thank him for what he's done for us. And at the end of that prayer, if you agree with me, please say Amen. And if you don't, that's not a problem. So let's pray together now. Father God, we do thank you for the sunshine that we can go outdoors in and the sunshine that we can play in. And Lord, we thank you that whatever the weather, all that you've created can praise you through it. Lord, we can see your handiwork all the time, whatever the weather is. And so, Father, we want to give you thanks because it makes us want to sing with joy because we know and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, John's going to bring us the Bible story um, in a moment and he's going to expand on that. But first of all, we're going to have the Bible reading, which today is from Psalm 96, verses 9 to 13. And it's going to be read by Janine and Jessica, by Zoe and Zara and by Maya. So well done, girls, and over to you. Worship the Lord because he is holy. The whole earth should tremble before the Lord. Tell the nations the Lord is king. The earth is set and it cannot be moved. He will judge the people fairly. Let the skies rejoice and the earth be glad. Let the sea and everything in it shout. Let the fields and everything in them show their joy. Then all the trees of the forest will sing for joy. They will sing before the Lord because he is coming. He is coming to judge the world. He will judge the world with fairness and the nations with truth. Well, hello everyone and welcome to the Family Bible Time as part of Families at Four. I wonder where you are at the moment because, you know, it's half term. Are you on the beach? Are you sitting at home? Maybe in the garden? Maybe not if it's raining. Maybe you are on holiday though. Maybe you're in a holiday home or a caravan or a tent. Well, I wonder if you can remember what we were talking about, oh, must be three weeks ago now. I was talking about language, do you remember? And we were thinking about some people who decided to build a tower. Remember that? Yes, the Tower of Babel. And uh, they wanted to show how good they were and they built this tower higher and higher up into the heavens and God came down, saw what they were doing and he gave them different languages that confused them and they had to stop building. And the people were spread throughout the earth. Actually, you know, it's fantastic that there are different cultures in our world, different countries, different peoples. Um, for example, here are a couple of ladies from St Lucia and uh, they love the sun, the fruit. You can see the watermelon there. You can see some goodies on that lady's shoulder and uh, they have a, a very happy spirit in the Caribbean where the weather's a lot better than it is now. Have you ever seen one of these before? It's a Russian doll. Russia, freezing cold in the winter, but they again are a different people, speaking different languages, Russia. Then there's another huge country, China. And uh, there's uh, wonderful music from China, wonderful ceramics, wonderful glass, beautiful art and the people, they, uh, they speak a different language from the Russians. And Indonesia. Indonesia, the people are lovely, they're gracious, they're um, very happy, 
They live a very simple life. They speak a different language to the Russians and to the Chinese. And um, they have volcanoes all across their country. Um, we were there a couple of years ago and there was an earthquake when we were leaving. So uh, the Indonesians uh, have a different culture from the Russians, from the Chinese, from the Caribbean. It's a, it's a lovely variety in our world. And you know, each of these different uh, countries and cultures have music, don't they? And their music is very different. Chinese music is different from Russian music, which is different from British music, which is different from Indonesian music. I wonder if you saw the Eurovision Song Contest last weekend. You see all the countries that took part. Don't quite understand why Australia, which isn't part of Europe, is in there, but still, and Israel as well. But anyway, Eurovision Song Contest. Number one, who came first? Italy. Who came second? Ukraine. Third, I think it was France. And then it was Finland and then Iceland. Anybody know where the UK came? Last. Nil points. But music is a great way to express yourself. You know, I do like music and I do like singing, but it, it's a shame that we can't sing in church. Still, I feel a bit sad standing up and humming some of the hymns and songs that I really like. But you know, when we like something, when we love something, when we love somebody, it makes us want to sing about it. Anyone seen the musical Oliver, for example? The first song in that musical is Food, Glorious Food. So the person who wrote that song obviously liked food. Best-selling single of all time, the best-selling record of all time is White Christmas. We all like snow at Christmas. So the joy we get from something we like, whether it be food or snowy Christmases or the person we love, it leads us to praise that person in song. By singing a song about them. And, uh, you know, in our reading this afternoon in Psalm 96, that's what this is all about. This is a song that's um, being sung by the whole world, the person who wrote the psalm says. Not just Europe, but right across the globe, right across the planet, singing a song about the Lord who is God. And did you notice that the song that they're writing about describes what the Lord's like? He is splendid. He is holy. He is glorious. He is majestic. But also in our reading, it says that all the joy we have, all the joy that comes from all of creation, flowers, fields, stars, trees, the seas, human beings, all the joy we have, is caught up in singing a song of praise to our Lord God. You know, the joy we have for going for a walk on the common or on the beach, all the joy we have in climbing trees or running around in the fields, looking up at the stars or seeing all the wonderful creatures in nature. That is given to us by God and he reigns, says the song. He's in charge. He's in control. That's what it says in verse 10. That's not rains like, you know, we've had every day for the past five weeks. No. He reigns. He reigns as a king over all the world. And he made the world. It's his. He created it. He is the king. He knows what's best for it. He's done a fantastic job. He's in control of the world 
right now, even in 2021, with all its problems. It may not look like it. It may not feel like it sometimes. But, you know, God is in control. And sometimes, you know, when you're feeling sad and life seems difficult and you're pretty frustrated about how bad the world seems to be, it can feel that actually God isn't in charge. He's not reigning. He isn't king. But, you know, overall, he is in control and he's very good. And he knows that we have difficulties in this world, which is why he came to this earth in the form of a human being, in the form of Jesus. We often say Jesus is king, don't we? He came and he died on a cross for our brokenness, for the world's brokenness and our failure and our sin. And when he rose from the dead, he raised us up to know God again to be part of his family again. So we can look through the sadness of this world to the fact that God is in control, that he actually has the world in his hands. He reigns. And our reading also tells us what God is going to do one day, which is brilliant news because it is about the badness. It says in verse 13 that he's coming to judge the world one day. So if we're feeling upset about the world or frustrated about it because things aren't right and they aren't right, we can join in with the song that all creation sings because God is going to put them right in the future. Jesus is going to come back to earth and he's going to judge the earth. And then the whole of creation is going to sing a song. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. When Jesus returns to earth, the whole of earth will be singing and celebrating because he'll be judging the badness, dealing with it and putting it right. So will you join with me in a prayer? And you can listen to what I say. And uh, if you agree with me, you can say Amen. Dear God, we're thankful that uh, you reign, that you're in charge of the world, that you made this fantastic planet with all its beauty. And we're so pleased that you do indeed rule over the earth now, today. Even though there's so much wrong with the world, we know that you will one day come back and judge the earth and deal with the badness and put it all right. That is why we can join in with all of creation and sing a song of celebration. Thank you that Jesus will come and be the judge, that you're good and you're faithful to your promises. Amen. Amen. Well, now it's time for some questions. Quite a tricky reading, but I hope you've got your brains in gear. Because here we go. Now it's time to talk together as a family as you have a go at answering these questions. There's one question for each age group, but feel free to do more than one if you like. Have a great discussion together as you think about this true Bible story and what it means for you. We've been thinking about how all of creation sings God's praise because he is good and faithful. We've also heard how God will judge the earth in fairness and truth, and his judgment will bring us joy. It's not something to be feared if we are trusting in Jesus, but instead something to be praised. Why not thank God that he is a fair and truthful God, and he will put right everything that is wrong with the world one day, when Jesus comes back to rule and reign. And if you're struggling with the idea of God's judgment being a good thing, why not ask him to help you understand how he is good and fair and to turn your fear into joy? Don't forget to use the prayer focus to guide your prayers together if you would like to pray together. 
The questions will stay on the screen for a couple of minutes, but pause your video if you need more time. And when you're ready to move on, I'll see you for this week's Memory Verse Challenge. Welcome to this week's Memory Verse Challenge. I've drawn some pictures to help us learn this week's verses. Are you ready? If you're seven or under, here is the verse for you. Let's have a look. Tell the nations the Lord is King. The earth is set. It cannot be moved. He will judge the people fairly. Psalm 96 verse 10. And if you're eight or above, here is your verse. Let's learn it together. They will sing before the Lord because he is coming. He is coming to judge the world. He will judge the world with fairness and the nation with truth. Psalm 96 verse 13. All of creation will sing God's praises because he is good. One day Jesus will judge the earth and everything in it, including you and I. But if we have trusted in him, and in what he did for us when he died on the cross for us, then we are safe with him forever. Jesus has paid the price for our sin so that we can be free, forgiven by God and live with him in paradise forever. This is great news and it brings us great joy. We can't help but praise him for all he has done for us. I wonder, can you draw your own pictures like I did to help you remember one of those verses that we just learnt together? Or perhaps you might like to add in some actions instead to help you remember, or just learn the verses if that's easier for you. Now if your verse is a little bit too long, just do part of it, and if it's too easy, see if you can learn both verses. But whichever way you choose, see if you can say one or part of one of those verses Without looking, why not send us in a video of you saying the verse with or without actions or send us in a photo of the pictures you have drawn, like I did, to help you remember and we can share it with everyone next week. Dan will be back next time with Dan's epic challenge. But for today, as we've been thinking about singing, we have a song related challenge for you. In a moment, Paul is going to whistle or hum some well-known songs and you have to work out which song he's whistling. Now there are six all together to guess and to make it a little bit more challenging, Paul's added in some extra sounds to distract you. So don't be fooled, listen carefully and see if you can name that tune. Name that tune. <laughs> Mm-hmm.
Hakuna Matata and the Bare Necessities, don't you? There are some great songs we can sing, but the best song we can sing better than even the greatest pop song ever that stayed at number one in the charts for the longest time. Better than that is a song of praise to Jesus for all that he has done for us. Let's choose to use our voices to worship him and to sing his praises today. Well, we've reached the point of families at four where we're going to do today's craft. Now, believe it or not, I am doing the craft. Now, I don't know anything about craft, so this should be interesting. Uh, we're going to make a musical instrument specifically. We're going to make uh, a couple of crocodile castanets. Now, if you don't know what castanets are, they're kind of these things that you um, snap together like this and they make a fun rhythm because today we've been thinking about how all of creation praises God, worships God. And a good way to worship God is in song. And that's why we're going to make a musical instrument, because that will help us to worship God. So, for your crocodile castanet, you will need... So you're going to need some cardboard, like this. This is just uh, like a cardboard box that I've cut some pieces off. So you need some cardboard like that. Uh, you're going to need not a pineapple. No idea what that's doing there. Um, you will need some buttons that like we've got there, um, some googly eyes. Um, I've got some green, um, these are paint pens, so they're pens that have got paint in. But if you've just got normal paint, or if you haven't got any paint, you could use felt tip pens, um, sharpies, or um, you could just use tissue paper and stick on uh, the colour tissue paper that you need. Uh, we've got some a little decoration things there, you can use whatever you've got and some scissors and uh, also some glue and uh, if you've got some red card that might be helpful too because we're making a crocodile we might put a tongue inside his mouth so the red will be for that so first of all uh, you need to take your cardboard and it needs to be cut into a piece roughly that size we need two of them because we're going to make two castanets and the first thing to do because they're going to be crocodiles is to colour them in either with your felt tips, or with your paint, or with your tissue paper, green. As you can see, I've coloured in both sides of uh, my pieces of cardboard green. Hopefully you've done similar. Uh, next, we are going to um, stick the buttons off. But before we do that, we need to fold them in half. So we're going to fold both of these in half. And then, uh, let's do that first actually. So we're going to fold it in half. Now you need to try and make sure it's exactly in half. Same the other one, don't worry if it opens up a little bit. That's fine. Like that. So we've got them both in half, and 
and then we are going to use, I've got these stiffy pads, uh, double sided stiffy pads, if you haven't got them you could use um, sellotape, uh, you could probably use glue, uh, you might need to use something stronger than a prick stick, maybe some sort of, um, yeah, some sort of stronger glue, uh, but I'm going to use these uh, to stick these buttons, one at that end in the middle and one at the other end. Uh, so now we've done that, we're almost ready, we can make a bit of a sound, can't we? Uh, but we're just going to finish them off by decorating them a little bit more. So I have uh, some googly eyes uh, to give the crocodile some eyes, which I'm going to stick on just there. And I also have some little bits to decorate his back as well. Now I know crocodiles don't normally have sparkly backs, um, but it will still look fun. So we're going to use some of them. And we're also going to give him using this uh, red cardboard. Uh, I'm going to cut out a tongue for him as well. And now we have made our crazy crocodile castanets. Let's have a listen. There you go. And uh, as we've been hearing today, God created everything to praise him. So in a minute we're going to sing a song. Why not use uh, your crocodile castanets to praise God as we sing this song together in a few moments. So, lots to do this week. Mums and dads, don't forget to send in photos and videos of any of this week's crafts so that we can include you in Family Support and next challenges. time. And challenges, those two. Now let's finish with a song to help us remember what we've learned today. Today we've heard from the Bible how the Lord Jesus is the king over the whole earth and how he will judge the earth in fairness and in truth. That's right, indeed he will. And his fair and kind judgment is a good thing and it brings us joy, which is why all of creation sings his praise. So let's sing a song all about this. Let's sing, the Lord is King. Join in with the actions or the singing or both. See if you can spot the line that tells us how Jesus is King over the whole earth and the line that tells us how he will judge the earth that he has made. Let's sing and praise him together now.
the Lord's decree. He sees in all till judge in fierce majesty. The blessed are all who find their place in the shelter of his grace. more about that and we'll see you a week on Sunday. Have a great half term. Great half term. Yes indeed and we shall see you soon. See you soon.